Hey there my friend, it's Will here over to fxace.com First of all, welcome to the video So it's Sunday the 8th of October 2017 About to start another hopefully fantastic week in the Forex uh, trading world So today's video my friend is basically just a quick analysis of some trades I'm looking at Longer term trades I'm looking to trade this week in the FX markets So if you haven't downloaded my a free ebook it simply click the link below head over to the website and you'll be able to access it which is basically showing you how I'm analyzing the market here in this video so head over download the free book hope you enjoy it uh, so first off we want to really look at Forex factory this week tomorrow a lot of bank holidays US Canada uh, Sunday today Japan we've got the bell speaks Australia, choose to be manufacturing reduction in the UK, the pound. Uh, towards the end of the week, we have Wednesday, we have the minutes meeting. We've got a lot of Fed speakers happening this week. Canadian, Canada, Euro Draghi speaks on Thursday, so. Friday the 13th also we have the CPI, inflation rates in the US, retail sales and then we've got a couple of members speaking. So quite a bit of news, a bit of news towards the end of the week. So we could be getting in, positioning ourselves into positions before the news actually happens based on price action. So let's head over to the charts, some trades I'm looking at this week. EURUSD, if you have accessed my uh, day trading course we talked about the euro USD trade heading down towards or just hitting one on Friday 16.550 and you can see NFP just more or less hit it why based on this move here just take that off a minute you can see this is the overall range of the euro USD we've got the 25 75 50 and 25 percent mark I like to have but you can see we've had a few bounces here before. First bounce was this initial move up, then a couple of smaller one here, and then a smaller move here, then it broke down through. And we're getting an initial reaction, move back up towards it. So this was a good trading opportunity. If you were looking at it coming into it, and based on price action, nice steep rally up into it. And you can see if you look, we got the divergence trend line break here. We got a divergence and a move down to the first target on the weekly. This, why is it a weekly level? This level was the level that caused the last high in the trend. So you can see we've had this uptrend. This area here, pause and rally back up, swing low, swing high, up into the area of interest. So the first target of that bounce, of that break, is this area here. Come down and more or less touched it with, within a, a couple of pips on Friday. The NFP you can see. It was a small level within the level here. Here. And you can see we actually are getting the falling wedge. You can actually see it if you look into the 4 hour chart. We're getting this, we're getting a few divergences. Price moving lower, indicator moving higher. And we could be up getting up for a retracement bounce back on Monday, start of the week. So if this low holds, we're likely to see it head back up towards 119. And on Monday I will look to trade, take a trade on the euro. If it breaks this trend line and rally it back up towards 119. That's it, this breaks. I'm going to stop below it and then up up to around here one at the one eighteen five hundred or up higher. But I'm gonna be careful trading this just with all the news this week. But price action you can see we've had this initial drop to the low of the trend and it's slowing down into it. We've had the uptrend. This is the last low that caused the last high. Comes down into it. Slowing of momentum, you actually see the slowing of momentum on the daily, the falling wedge here. 
Now we really want it to break that wedge. Breaks that. You can see the MACD on the four-hour chart giving us the divergence. So I really wanted to break this. Breaks this wedge. We can start ban again, ban up. This low fails this week with all the news here at sixteen six fifty. If it close below this, we're heading back down towards one fourteen maybe. So it's 116,600 is trapping the market up at the minute. Breaks this falling wedge on the daily on the four hour chart. We could be heading back up towards 119. So we'll watch that closely. Pound. Pound has been dropping pretty hard. Let's move all these lines and show you what I'm looking at. So we head out to the monthly. On the pound. Oh, this is the card, USD card, sorry. We'll look at that in a minute. Pound, just move all these drawings. Okay. Move out to the monthly. And we'll zoom out. See this low here? This was the all time, well, what history we have in the British pound, US dollar. On MetaTrader, this was the low of the all time the all time range between this high and this low. The Brit exit really uh, broke this. You can see comes down, breaks it, and we've been slowly moving up towards it the past well past year. Uh, the f you can see we had this gap fill from the day after Brit exit. So we did. This was also if you draw your fib your fib line. Just showing you why this, why the pound retraced where it did, and why it's been dropping pretty hard since then. So we've had this initial move up. It's been moving slowly, slowly, slowly. We are getting bearish signals all the way down here. Price comes up, takes out, put around about the fifty percent area. You can see it just pops up, fills that gap. As soon as it filled the gap, it's just been dropping since. Plummeting. We actually got the divergence in the four hour chart. You can see it's price is moving down, spikes up here, anywhere in here. We sold this and it's been dropping. I actually sold this at 134,500, entered my first short position, and then I sold again about 135,500. And we've been dropping since. My, if you've got my day trading course, we talked about the 132 area for a possible uh, take profit. Or a possible retracement. It's just we did get a small retracement, but there was no divergence on the indicator, so there wasn't. So we didn't bother. Price just broke straight down three. What I'm looking at now is possible move back down to this channel, which is likely works falling pretty hard towards. You can see on the daily, we did have this. We've had this channel here for a while on the British Pound USD. The fundamentals, it is pretty bearish on the pound. The minute, a lot of uncertainty with the euro, Brexit, and that. Even though, even with the interest rates, this interest rates really, I think, just pop the market up to fill them orders to get the liquidity to bring the market back down heavily and fill that gap. And you can actually see that after the day of the breakout, it didn't continue. It started slowing down. We get these wicky candles. Market distributed, moving sideways, comes back down within the in this channel, and it's been plummeting hard towards the bottom. So, likely targets for possible buy trade. The bottom of the channel, it is in and around these areas here. One twenty nine five hundred and one twenty nine, I think. So you can see here in the daily, well one twenty eight this bottom area here. But likely around 129, 129, 500. I'm looking for a, a buy trade only on slow enough momentum. You see, we're, the MACD is pretty hard, falling hard in the daily. We're not getting the diversion chip. We're not getting slow enough momentum. You can see these small candles here. Assuming that the one hour chart, we're definitely getting divergence on the MACD, but I want to see us in the 4 hour, I want to see how we pop down into this area, hits the trend line, the channel, and then we can rally back up, 
possibly if it's slowing in momentum we get a rally back up towards the top of the trend line top of one th either 135 136 area so it'll be a good trade if it works out not all depends on the slowing of momentum breaks this channel and guys we are heading back down towards 120 towards 125 anyway and then the next level down below that's 120 so that's if it breaks this if it doesn't break it it holds we could be heading back up slowly let's see USD CAD so was a nice buy trade if you watched <gasps> If you've got my day trading course, you would have seen this trade we talk about. I've had this area here on the chart that caused on the monthly that caused this last high. I've had the weekly level in within it here, and we had slow enough momentum on the daily chart. This is actually a perfect trade. It's one of the ones you look for on the higher time frames. A lot of pips monthly, weekly level within a level daily. Price drops. We have the divergence on the MACD here. Price is moving down, the indicator is moving higher, pops down into the level. And you actually get a lot of this, see a lot of this better on the four hour chart down here. Well, it's been slowly moving up. So, what we're looking at now, first target more or less hit. This is your first target here, the last area that caused the last low. Price has been, although the monthly is up. So it is, this is the area that caused the last high. It's never been taken out. This area here didn't cause nothing. Although this bounce here didn't cause any high, so we could be getting weaker on the SD card. But we've got this big pin bar last month and a good reaction of that strong, strong reaction of that area down here on the weekly that we talked about in the day trading course. So I'm looking, I've been looking to sell this trade. And it's coming in just for a short term trade. You get the daily, the 4 hour chart here. It's more or less just missed it. We're getting all the, look at all these divergences we're getting on the 4 hour chart. So it's really telling me we're getting ready for a, a drop back down. Based on just look at price action compared to these drops down, look at price action gone up. You know what I mean? A lot of squiggly lines. These are clean drops. Clean. Whereas price is just slowly moving up. We're going to way back up towards maybe this area here, this area here. We're getting a lot, a lot of divergence. So I'm looking to short the USD CAD. And because the CAD is pretty strong at the minute, the break of this trend line here, we're heading lower. We're looking to short it to here and then short it down here towards one. Take out this low here, 118, and we could be heading a lot, lot lower. That is if this level holds. Alternatively, we always want to have options to the upside also. If it doesn't drop, this level gets taken out here. This area gets taken out. We'll be looking for a trade up here. Be a possible target up here. But based on the versions we're getting at the minute of the USD CAD, slowing of momentum coming into this area up here, be looking to sell the USD CAD for a good, good, nice, nice drop. USD yen, another pair I'm looking to sell. Look out head out. You can see you actually see it in the four hour chart. You can see the round, the slowing of momentum, getting a lot of divergence. Look at the monthly. Over the past year, we've been in this like sort of range area here. Channel. Let's see the euro, not the euro, the USD, JPY. Sort of this, this price channel here. Comes up, pot, touches it, moves down, moves down lower, comes up, creates this new little drop down a few weeks ago. 
and um, we've seen in the daily so we have this area here cause this low what we do then we zoom in for a level within a level a daily and we have the couple here this one's held nicely didn't break it another one up here you can see on Friday we did have a real big spike up in the level it held again it didn't get broken uh, MACD so what are we looking at here so I'm saying breaks this area here on Monday 112-200 close below this area and I'm shortening the USD yen there is some tension this over the weekend with the North Korean thing crisis Donald Trump tweet making a couple of tweets saying there's only one answer to the situation in North Korea which is sounding more military so we could see some pretty drastic drops in the yen or in the yen pairs over the coming weeks if suffering does happen there as the yen is a safe haven and anytime there's a crisis it will the yen will get stronger just based really basically because it's a safe haven because it is a low interest country and there's a lot of loans in that country they're taken out at below zero interest rates so that's why it's a safe haven so daily you can see for our chart I'm looking to sort this market just basically down to the bottom of this area down here maybe lower We'll see what happens. Breaks 112, 200. Clean break. I'm shorting this market. Clean break here. Close below here. This line 112, 200. I can see this move plummeting. We're getting a nice curve action on the slowing of momentum. Distributing coming into that trend line, that area just to the, the channel line here. And so it breaks here. I'm moving down. My stop loss will be up up above this area here and I'll adjust it accordingly dropping but it's good risk reward. Not trade Aussie. The Aussie. Okay, monthly. We've had this breakout area here. This was a monthly area. You can see this is actually a breakout area. Prices broke out from. Draw this area on the on the Aussie. So it was the first touch. This monthly area caused this low here and this trend down, and we've had this move up here. We've had this. I just want to show you the trade that that happened on the why it's been dropping. So you can see this area here on the weekly. So we've had the monthly area. We've had the weekly area within the monthly. Zoom down to the daily, and you can see we've had this is why the Aussie dollar USD was dropping. Had a, Brilliant trade on that. See with the move up here. This you could take this trade if you wanted in the first touch, but this is the trade here you want. Basically moves back up into the area, creates a new high, but the MACD is moving lower, especially getting this divergence on a daily chart is a lot lot stronger. And you can see we've had this pin bar rejection at the area. We have the divergence, strong area on the monthly, which was a great trade on the Aussie. So the first target would have been this area here, the breakout area. So let's analyze what could be possibly happening now on the Aussie dollar USD. Take that monthly area off. Now, you can see we've had this stage of accumulation on the Aussie USD. Now, this is a breakout area here. And price has been rallied, well, it's dropped pretty hard coming into that area, into the breakout area. So if this area holds and we get good price action signals to head higher, maybe we've got this pin bar rejection on Friday, the NFP, get a close above this high, we get an engulfing candle here, I'm buying this market. If not, it continues lower, breaks 
closes back down in below here possible target is down here to short the market so if this area holds I'm buying the market and I'm targeting this here level here holds I'm targeting up here it's going to take out this high I'm just going to move higher doesn't we're heading back down towards these areas here 75 74 area holds we're in for a we could be in for a big move up so let's see what happens this week what are, what's happening on the four hour chart we're getting divergence already and price is moving lower but the indicator is moving higher so we could be in for a short term day trade up to this area here 80 pips for a 30 risk board so Monday we could get a rally up to 78500 and that's the last area in the four hour chart to cause this low down into this area so that's a possible area that I'll be looking for and we'll watch that what happens on Monday slowing the momentum into this area so all depends on the speed of price coming into it if it's shooting up into it fast it's likely to just take it clean out and head higher moves up slowly you could possibly you can see this on the one hour chart again boom, boom. move up higher up to here I think it's gonna be 78500 at the start of the week could be a target Swiss franc another trade that I've been looking at is the euro JPY I mean, we've got this monthly area here on the euro JPY take these lines off this is a short term weekly daily trade you can see the trend is up let's take out okay we've got this area in the monthly here price has just come into now the weekly we'll zoom out see price just comes up into this weekly area <clears throat> touches the start of the monthly and we are in an uptrend see uptrend being this low here caused this high this low caused this high and we're retracing this leg down so there we go I have been getting sort of rising wedge you can see moving up gaps up slowly moving up 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 for daily chart so something that I've noticed here you can see into this daily isn't this weekly area monthly area I've had a divergence pops up into it, a nice rejection a nice sell so I'm looking to sell this market if it break below 132 close below here target is down here at 130 129 so it's closed below here 132 I'm targeting maybe a 200 300 pip move down to the bottom of the trend line daily so yeah so it breaks 132 I'm moving low I'm expecting it to move lower to 130 Take starts taking out this trend line 130 we're heading we could be heading boom especially with all this North Korea stuff down test this 130 area here then the next area below that is at 128 127 500 low swing low and then this area down here at 124 And this North Korea thing could be the trigger for this yen pair to move lower. But it all depends if it breaks. If this area holds, we could begin to move back up. So it all depends if it breaks 132. Breaks 132, I'm liking it down to 130, and I'll analyze price at 130 to see if we want to get back in the trend and move to move back up, or if I think it's going to continue to fall lower. But the minute breaks 132 I'm going lower stop loss above 133 and that's a 2 to 1 risk reward that would be a nice trade for the, the week British pound Japanese yen it has been dropping hard since that initial move out 
more or less come up and touch this area here on the monthly chart from this leg down. This was from the Brit exit. So I'll come up nearly how many pips? 200 pips within it. Go to the weekly. So you can see price had been ranging in between more recent between one forty where it is now one forty seven and one forty or one move that down. So it had been ranging in between this area here. It broke out of that interest, that, that news that came out the high inflation in the UK and in the interest, but again the fundamentals I think are still net short, bearish on the pound, and this North Korea thing could make this pair drop all the way back down to the bottom of this range. So it all depends what happens I think at this area here, 146. <coughs> We're not getting a diversion set in the daily. For our chart, still price still moving lower, the indicator still moving lower. So I can see it coming down to 146 anyway at the start of this week. If it takes that out, we're heading right back down, all the way down here to 140, 139. So it is, and it's just a false breakout. So that's my analyst, analyst. that's the trades I'm looking at the week ahead. So it is. If you have any questions regarding the strategy, just simply download the ebook. It tells you exactly what I'm looking at here. Go over the video a few times. Hope it helps. We'll come back on Friday and see what's Friday or Saturday, and we'll see what trades have actually occurred. And how we went. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to head over to the site, download the free ebook. Any questions, get in contact with me at will at the fxas.com or add me at skype at william.simpson20. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next week.